the Butcherino. Ooh. And, uh, Prepare for battle. See how this game goes. It, you know, see how we can uh, we can get our predictions right if you guys are in game and in client right now. But full five five smokes coming out and just sending some illusions over mid. We'll see if they can spot any maybe wards being placed down. Get that early advantage. The bounty rune fights are gonna go every time there's a start to a game, and I know I've said this to you a thousand times, but I think of that Coddle Ultra Kill pre minute one. And I always want to see a fight like that. Yeah, probably not going to happen ever again. This is like Southeast Asian specialty where, <laughs> where Coddle <laughs> killed five people pretty much. One thing that TSM do have in this one is tankiness. They do have a lot of tanks, a lot of good frontline. Uh, Lone Druid, I want to see what the item is going to be on him. I see Radiance queued up. Most of the like mid Lone Druids that I watched in High Professional Dota and some of the like, because he hasn't been picked much, but I also right. think this hero is going to be played a lot at this TI, has been this Diffusal Blade. Hmm. And Diffusal, Diffusal Blade on a couple of yeah. heroes, right? Diffusal Blade, Echo Saber. So we'll see if they fight. Top's in the one right in the bounty room. But there are three heroes here. All right, and White Mon will pressure Top's in enough to push him away from the bounty. And TSM, well, they've got themselves three bounty runes to start. And then one will be picked up here by Tundra, so... Just taking a look across the board as they're <laughs> going to be throwing this Lone Druid in the top lane with Ari. Switching things up. One of the heroes like that can do really well against Warlock if he's caught out of position, because this hero, what he does is uses Fatal Bonds, pushes out the wave, then goes for the pool, uses Fatal Bonds again. It's Pudge, but... <sighs> Because he can hook him out. Like, he can hook him out of the position, starting right. with Rot immediately level one in this bottom lane. I like what I see. He's going to soak a lot of damage from both Fatal Bonds and right clicks, but also wants to kill Illusions immediately. Yeah, I can't get too comfortable in the lane right now. And, you know, level one, you've got Dream Protector who's helping you or trying to help you with Nature's Grasp. But already feels like Tundra's putting some pressure on to Tomato. We only got one Tango remaining. You're saying mid's going to be very important. Right now, it's just pretty much even. Who do you think comes away ahead of this mid matchup between Brow and Thompson? I think Brow's going to do good. Like, he's playing Zeus into melee hero. Sure, you're playing into Earth Spirit, one of the heroes, like, one of the easiest heroes you can close the gap with. But uh, right. I could see Brow doing good. You also have Heavenly Jump ever since this addition. Zeus feels much nicer to play. Picks that heavenly jump up level two. Working with that arc lightning. And we'll see when Thompson uh, chooses to also rotate through these lanes too. Like you said, Earth Spirit's definitely one of those heroes that has that long range initiation. He's sitting a little bit low here. Needs to be careful as this arc lightning starting to put big hurt on him over mid. Brile might pick up both water runes. He's putting in some pressure. Doesn't have much mana to work with. Only heavenly jump. Thompson's bottle is on the way, but Brile, he wants to maybe put in slightly more pressure. There's the Inkswell top. Yeah, they're going to get this first blood. 33 is going to get credit for it. Kasani is going to fall. They look over at Ari. He's able to sit under the tier one tower alive for a moment, but getting that first blood for Tundra. And you were talking about the upgrades to this Inkswell, being able to pop it off yourself. It just makes it so much easier to line things up and they show it there by getting first blood. Easy does it in the top lane, and you can see that lane's already going well for Tundra, and bottom is looking pretty good too. 12 and 4 for Seattle. They're completely free farming in this lane. Putting pressure on Pudge. Kimado, he's doing okay. Uh, does have a ring of health, does have ring of protection to soak up some of that physical damage. Top lane again, and it My looks like Nine's going to be the one who falls. That Inkswell not saving him that time. So Kasana gets a little bit of revenge onto the Grim Stroke. And it's not only did he die, but now his courier finally respawns, but gets a little bit of gold back in his pocket. And you can see the power of the bear already. And Grim Stroke not feeling like, uh, you know, he can really stay nearby too well, unless his positioning's kind of perfect against the bear, right? Snowball into tag team. It's a lot of damage coming through. It is, like you have to be careful. For now, Ari saving a point 
deciding whether he needs to block them off with the shard or if he wants to put another point in tag team. You get close tag team plus the bear. Let's see. He decided to put a second one in tag Bottom team. lane. Sneaking's in trouble, and they've got a net on the tomato. Leech Seed here with right clicks coming in from White Mon, who's got no more mana left. Fairy Fire, Blood Grenade goes back towards the tree and ends up losing his life. They've got the Fatal Bonds on, but they just don't have the damage to get a kill on either Tomato or White Mon at the moment, and maybe they can chase him down and land a net. Maybe get a Courier. No Courier there. Skitter in a little bit far. Tomato, no hook. It's on cooldown, so... This is what I'm we mentioned. You're playing into Warlock. If you reposition him with the hook, you might be able to get the kill because he wants to keep the distance, stay like in the vicinity of a tower and just secure the farm. For his, for his safe laner, maybe get the pull off. Zeus, he's going to be level six in the next minute. So I expect TSM to start playing much more aggressive as soon as Zeus gets the level six get anybody close to low, you can really help out with a nice Thunder God's Wrath. They're going in. They've got the roll. They have Topsy making the move over towards top. They look over at the bear, and it will be Plus 300, 300 gold that. for Topsy. That's a, that's a hero kill in itself. Like, 300 gold is no joke, especially when you're giving it over to the mid. He's still going to stick around, it seems. He's one of the heroes they, that they can... still see him, though. Yeah, he can still rotate. Like, there's two heroes in the game. I'm lane again. Constant action. Can't even finish my thought. Yeah, they go for Skitter. They get the kill. They land the hook. That upheaval is not doing enough to save this Naga. Get some damage on it to Tomato as he's trying to run away. Uh. Kicking down 50 health. Pops that stick. He has a shared tango. There's not much the Warlock can do once he's able to walk away. But top lane, they're going after Ari. They've got the ink slow. They have the pressure on. They're looking for the Tusk. But here comes the Zeus. Files in. Topson with a roll, trying to get away. They get the kill on Ari. They'll finally take up the Tusk, but Topson in trouble. Going to try and run away, but the Thunder God's Wrath is there, and Bryle will get the kill on the Earth Spirit trying to retreat. This is something that we mentioned during the draft as well. TSM heroes are really difficult to kill, especially early on. They're super tanky. This is Twin Protector level 4 with 1,000 HP. Nine. Nine. Over mid, and I mean, Ari's in the mix as well. That Ink Soul's never going to pop. Bryle's got another kill. So Bryle makes some move. He's the one who TP's top, gets two kills for his trouble. Now bottom lane again, a lot of action. Thompson's made his way over bottom, and they're going to get this punch. Uh, Thompson, one of those players that doesn't care about his own levels or anything. Like, he wants to make a move, and now he might be able to go for the move, pick up enemy XP rune. This is going to be massive if he manages to do it. He does have boulder Still smash. He does have rolling boulder. Top gets two kills for his trouble. Now bottom lane again. A lot of action. Thompson's made his way over bottom, and they're going to get this punch. Uh, Thompson, one of those players that doesn't care about his own levels or anything like he wants to make a move and now he might be able to go for the move pick up enemy xp rune this is going to be massive if he manages to do it he does have boulder Still smash he does have rolling boulder available as well and also nine is going for his own xp rune so potential for double xp rune here for the side of tundra after getting a couple kills but also dying over top they're bringing a lot of heroes here for tsm Thompson's here with Snake King, and he drops down the Magnetize. The upheaval will slow down White Mom, but they've got the Snowball to stop that. So Snake King in a very vulnerable position with Pudge right behind. Oh, these punches Thompson's hurt. Thompson's getting low, and can he, he at least it up. get one kill? They'll get White Mom. Thompson gets the Wisdom Rune. Now he's got the Boulder Smash, but here comes Bryle. Mono gets Thompson, Bryle gets Snake King. And it's a two for one, but they do end up getting the Wisdom Rune and a kill. Ooh, not, not sure if that's... Like, XP runes, definitely worth it, but they also just got, like, one kill on position five while losing Thompson. He okay. did get those Urn of Shadow Charges before he died, so that's a big benefit, because sometimes you need that extra damage and also relieving some of the pressure from Skeeter. Very interesting build coming out from Bryle. This is, like, I've seen this a couple of times in pub, just skipping mana boots completely. Going on Bryle. Bryle. Speaking he's of Bryle, so he's dead. Oh, I'm trying to come over to help, but there's just... No real way for him to do so. And now the Fatal Bonds hit Ari and White Mon, so they can't really defend too well anymore. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Both of these teams on point when it comes down to deboarding. I think they already killed like three, four Observer Wards total. Mato in the bottom, farming up, getting his level six. Vanguard available. 
They smoke right off picking up that double damage, so they want to go for more. The pressure's not stopping from Tundra. They really want to keep their pedal on the gas. He said TSM, they have a really good early game, and I think they're trying to counter right now from Tundra with pressure of their own, right? 33 is level 6, so that means Solar Guardian is available. Inkswell is gonna ooh, be avoided with the snowball save from Ari, but they've got the magnetized to try and turn this. Damage coming in. Thunder God's Wrath. Hobson's dead. Ari traded. Down goes Tomato. So, two kills there for Tundra for the one of that Earth Spirit from the mid. And overall, it's okay for Tundra, but again, losing this Earth Spirit for the third time. <laughs> it's just stops and things. He loves to be super active, wants to like break the game. This is how he won two TIs, pretty much. Just constant aggression coming out from his team. And uh, I've noticed like the slight change in the way Tundra plays. Cause like pe when people talk about Tundra, it's all about, you know, they choke you out. But Tundra is also like, even before Topson joined, they were the team that could play extremely fast Dota when necessary. Now with the addition of Topson, look again. at him go. <laughs> yeah, they want to go for more, but they've got the snowball back over on a Topson. Inkswell. It's gonna pop. That stuns up Ari. They use the chaotic offering. They've got themselves the hook as well as the dismember on a tops in overgrowth used by White on. That's gonna control the warlock and the grim stroke. Solar Guardian used by 33 to try and save the Earth Spirit. They get the trade on to Ari. They look over at Tomato, the golem trying to hit him down with the help of the Dawnbreaker. They kill off Tomato. Stroke of Fate's not gonna be able to save 33. They lose Brian. White bonds low. He'll fall to nine. And four heroes are dead on the side of TSM. Yeah, this is the power of picking up two bounty runes. Both supports level six on side of Thunder pre-10 minutes coming into the fight. I don't think they executed the Soulbind plus Fatal Bonds. They, I, don't, I think it was only one Fatal Bonds in that fight, but still, like both supports also surviving. <laughs> Nine, well, he's level seven, so is Snaking. And uh, we're gonna see <laughs> that again. Yeah, the rolling to start on a Briar. Ari's been doing a really good job with these snowballs. But you can hold yeah, Inkswell for a long one, time. One Fatal Bonds. But still more than enough. And this Solar Guardian coming in clutch. Like, you know that you're not killing Golem in this fight. He's going to deal a ton of damage. Brawl needs to keep the distance. But uh, again, you have heroes that can close the gap. He does what he can in this one. Mm -hmm. Trades, but uh, they lose way too much. Yeah, they're a little clumped up. And that's just allowing Zeus to output a lot of damage with that Arc Lightning, right? Has Kaya, doesn't have neutral item yet. Maybe he finds a fairy trinket. Back into the game we go. As it's only a 1k net worth lead for Tundra at the moment, but it's been back and forth. It's 10 minutes in. We're, we're averaging two kills a minute at the moment. Yeah. We said fairy strength it. There it is on Zeus. Some extra spell and coming out from him. Ooh, that ulti, it's gonna hurt. Oh, yeah. While all this is happening, both kind of real carries in this game are farming. Kasane already has Relic, only needs to find Talisman. And he's very close. This is gonna be like 11 and a half, 12 minute radiance which is going to destroy Naga Siren and the Illusions. TSM will hit an earlier timing. I mean, that's something you talked about in the draft, right? Like the timing that they have available to them compared to Tundra's, but is Tundra slowing down that timing enough? They're doing a good job picking up like some of these earlier engagements. <laughs> Sonny's already got the Secret Relic. He's almost into the Talisman, 500 gold off of finishing off that Radiance. Ryle leading the net worth the moment. Like you said, has that fairy trinket, has the Kaya going into the Yules next. Things kind of, at least for the this current minute, slowing down a little bit. Not, not the constant fighting we've been used to the last five minutes of, of the game. 21 kills, 11 minutes. I don't think you can ask for anything better. And I say that, but they found made a lone druid. True form. They're gonna go, they've got the roll. Kasane's bear getting a little bit low. They've got the spirit vest on a Kasane. White Mon coming over the nature's grasp. The boulder smash hits on a Kasane. Trying to hide into these trees and will eventually 
Drop to Thompson, but here coming around the bend, Solar Guardian up in the air. Now they look over, that's gonna drop down. Hits on a White Mon, they've got the Magnetize, and they will smash down both Ari and White Mon. Even the though the stun... 33. Yeah, even though Solar Guardian stun didn't connect, uh, he still managed to, like, keep them inside and also just, like, eat them alive. This is a really nice move. They understood that Lone Druid might be getting closer to his Radiance, so they smoke right. gank him. Like, you see Naga Siren, like, Skeeter getting involved early on as Naga Siren, trying to set things up with Song of the Siren. Yeah, quick on and off with the Song, dropping the, the Sword Guardian, but the Starbreaker hitting on both White Mon and Ari, who are just trying to help, and you end up losing three heroes in that situation. This is a massive kill. Like, this delays their timing. All Tundra wants to do is, like, get some extra levels, get another item on Naga Siren, get involved. But they're also, like, not afraid to team fight because they have an insane amount of damage. Thompson, Spirit Vessel available on him. And then you have Fatal Bonds maxed out. This is <laughs> Vorlock level 9, 13 minutes into the game. Like, this is pretty big. A lot of experience going his way, and you can see the difference in net worths between the both both supports uh, from these teams. Is Grimstroke already has forty three hundred gold? I mean, that's that's quite a bit. And he's going into an early pipe, so arcane boots into a pipe for nine. This is something that Tundra always did really well. Understood like what they need to buy on their position four and fives. Mm -hmm. When Saxa played, he he was playing a slightly more on the greedier side but uh, so was snaking. I think like this change to map when it's 40% bigger does benefit teams like Tundra because this is also a team that tends to farm a lot. Like a lot of the times you've seen Tundra in the past also getting like pipe back on snaking. Rolling haste. I'm not gonna pick that up. Ooh, soul binds. Not the longest cooldown, so you use that as a bit of a deterrent from them going after Thompson, right? Yeah, they did not want to commit there. You know, level one, 70 seconds. I mean, level three for Grimstroke, 50 seconds on that cooldown is pretty much nothing at all three levels. You can see Warlock queuing up a shard, queuing up a Glimmer Cape. You've got Thompson trying to clear up a stack here. He's got himself that Midas with that Spirit Vessel. So he's trying to get himself a little bit more comfortable if the game goes later. It's a 7,000 net worth lead, even though the game felt even on kills. They're going to go bottom for 33. A mass TP is already being shown here by Tundra. Snake King comes in with a chaotic offering. That's dropped down on top of Ari. White Mon gets a little bit of that hit on him. And the chase is on the Geomantic Grip. They've got the silence on to Ari. They're making sure they've got this kill with the roll. And they at least take out the Tusk. Tundra is so quick reacting with these moves and also both supports on their side not afraid to use their ultimates to like zone them out for a second or two snaking immediately drops down the golem which does secure them tower might deal some extra damage but also they're i feel like they want to take another fight 33 does have ulti available and they're gonna smoke roshan is on dire side uh oh kasane he just yeah. showed himself to engage the top and we're gonna see if they can spot kasane again but Immediately, he wants to get out of dodge, and he goes Good over read. towards Bob. Does Tamana get caught here, though? He's in his own jungle, but that's still a little bit too far out for comfort. They've got multiple silences on him, and there's no way for him to escape. Nine's there with the, the Phantom's Embrace. They have the Geomagnetic Grip for the other silence, and they're moving right towards me. They have just made they're so quick. A, B, yeah. C. Like, they are just <laughs> going from point to point with no break in between. It was pretty much bottom, top, mid, and they might even they find move Brile. to the bottom. They found Brile. That's yeah, big. That's Brile. massive. Soulbind, and there's the Fatal Bonds. They go to the Solar Guardian that will drop down. Overgrowth's not going to do anything. Brile's already dead. Ari's going to extend his life with a Snowball, but the roll lands on a White Mon. They're still going to find this extra kill as White Mon's in trouble. He's in this thanks to the Shard, but they've got two. And, I mean, it's everything going their way. They just didn't have the detection ready to get this kill onto the tree, and he's a little bit lucky on that. Fortunate to be alive. They got the two big kills. I don't think they care too much about not killing tree and protector there. Again, getting the tower and fatal bonds, soul bind. Like, this is going to be good at every single stage of 
the game. Nine has pipe finish, not your traditional Grimstroke item, but they understand that most of the damage coming out from them right now is Magical Radiance Zeus Rod from Podge, which is not upgraded yet. Tomato needs another 1500 gold to finish off his Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, it's it, and that Ag's timing just feels like it's off the mark a little bit. But he, I don't know if it's going to be enough to really turn everything around. A feeble white mon is going to have to try and get into the trees once again. I don't know if anybody. Uh, he's got a sentry on sneaking, but he's holding the people. They're not going to go for white mon with the heroes around him. Well, potentially that you know we could see them go in again and have him go invis and still have his life. He sits off to the side, roll through. A little bit short of Ari and a leech seed used by White Mon, and that will at least for now be a deterrent where they can walk away. Snake is farming so aggressively in the enemy triangle. Knows the team is going to be ready to back him up. Solar Guardian available in 10 seconds and look at this item on 33 this is how they want ti there's no rate packed meta right now but he does have mage slayer available something that he bought on tide pipe plus mage slayer because it was less rack meta during the previous ti this is how they reduce the damage plus rate pack so pretty much the same thinking thunder style so still on brand with the uh, mage slayer right yeah, it's not your traditional item, but again, they know where the real damage is coming from. Close to mid, Bryo and Ari are nearby, but again, waiting on a couple of these items, wanting this Ags on Tomato. The, the bear for Kasane has the Radiance and he's going into the Mjolnir next, but there's so much time needed for this and Skidder's just gonna walk up out of the high ground and find Kasane. You got Wave on nearby. 33 is going to try and help with that Celestial Hammer. Overgrowth is used. Silence out of Kasane. They're not and, taking damage. Ooh, now they're going to find the roll. Tops and Chaotic Offering drop down onto both Ari as well as White Mon. They've got the supports in some trouble. Roll's going to miss Kasane, but they've got themselves the Ensnare coming out from Skidder. The Snowball to extend the life. Brown on the back lines with a Heavenly Jump to try and get away from Topson, but Topson's going to roll up into the high He's ground, in. And he wins. He's <laughs> on the Bryle. What a He's mad behind man. the Tier 3 while they go for Kasane over where the Tormentor would be if it was 20 minutes. They're gonna he chase got him. him all the way to the gate. They get the kill on a Bryal. They'll take out Ari. Kasane is looking next on the list with Thompson he nearby. The big one. Spirit Vessel on him, chasing him down. Boulder Smash on a Tomato to get the kill. Onto what Kasane. a player. <laughs> he goes in pretty much on his own. Rest of the team, some of them were still near the Tier 2 tower. And uh, that's just Thompson things. <laughs> what can he do? He no hesitation to roll up out of the high ground after the heavenly jump. He was he just wanted it, and he got it. <laughs> if only all of life was that easy. I want it. I got it. I wish. <laughs> you got it. Uh, this also opens up tormentors for them. I see warlock buying shard of his own. Nine has one queued up. Needs. Another 300 gold, and again, this is how Tundra does it. Like, they know how to utilize the map. And speaking of itemization, Grimstroke, he does have Trusty Shovel, digging up some bounty runes. Of course, snaking with the Philosopher's Stone, Big Boy Philly, providing him with some extra gold. Hand of Midas, this is where the difference is coming from. I think what changed the tempo of this game was this gang from Skeeter and the rest of the team on Lone Druid before he could right. get his Radiance off. Delaying yeah, the timing. Stop, right? They're going in. Awesome. Soulbind. Bear connected to his master, and now they're going to go in. They've got the roll onto the back lines again. He's always looking for Bryle. These heroes are alive, but with a sliver of health, they get the kill to Bryle. They've got the Solar Guardian that's going to drop down to the back lines. Kasane with a life being taken from his hands already. They drop down as they get this White Bond Tree Protector into some trouble. No one's dying on their side. They might be able to get one kill snaking. Tamano gone, White Mon looking next. Geo Magnetic Rift hits on a bolt of them. They'll even throw a blood grenade. They get the kill to Ari. Starbreaker was landing there and taking out this tusk, and it's a full team wipe as Tundra lose nothing. They just have way too much to stay now on their side. Shadow Word, uh, despite 
it's insane pickup. Like, uh, I, I think most of the players wouldn't pick it up on Grimstroke as a position four, but they know that they're going to hit their own timing, delaying timing from TSM, and then they can go in and do what they're doing right now. 21 minutes, 22 minutes into the game, 22k gold lead. Like, you know what I say a lot of the times, like, yeah. this is officially over when it hits 1k per minute. This is also a fight where there was no Fatal Bonds on double Soulbind. He went for the soup instead. <laughs> you can see the bear is already out of the fight. Sane lasts a little bit longer, but 33 has been perfect with these Solar Guardians, right? Dropping down behind the fight, knowing he's got the Celestial Hammer Starbreaker combo to follow it up. And yeah, the hook just into no man's land, not getting a kill or not finding a target. And then just the silences, he even keeps snaking alive. And not losing a single hero. Roshan's available if they want to go for it and try to close the game. But considering how Tundra's playing right now, I'm not sure they even need Rosh. I think they can keep this pressure going. It doesn't seem like they have to slow down at all. As Skitter's going to find Ari. Has that net. Snowball, buying some time. Shards to try and block him out. Mid lane, meanwhile, they're going after this Pudge. So Topson's going to be on a monster kill streak on a Tomato. And Skitter takes out Ari Solo over in the top part of the jungle. And they call GG. That is it. Tundra will take game one over TSM. And, I mean, they found a breaking point. The, the water started to flow through the dam. And that was all Tundra afterwards. Pretty much. Wow. They